Hey guys and welcome to another session on learning Verilog by examples and today we will be trying to make um, a cache and in this cache um, I'm just going to be showing how to use a for loop to iterate over bits in the cache and um, uh, before we do that let's just quickly look through the for loop and so the, the way the for loop is designed is that let's say you have a data vector which is 32 bits wide and i want to iterate over all the four bytes and i can print the value of all four bytes so just put a for loop i equals one to four and then you can display the values and the other thing cool thing about system error log is that it allows you to parse select inside a bit vector a larger bit vector using uh, variables right so uh, variable offset part selects not just fixed offset uh, I think basic Verilog supports fixed offsets. So here you can use the uh, iterator I to select um, variable part selects of the data vector. Okay, so that's just the basic use of for loop. Now if I expand upon this in the cache, um, the idea here is that we can use this cache uh, for loop, sorry, to create the cache. In the cache, we have clock reset, um, and we have um, two um, methods basically: the find method and an update method. Find method will find a given key and tell you if a match was found and what is the corresponding value for that key in the cache. The update method will take an update key and update value and update it in the cache. And the way this cache works is that it's just a FIFO. So we stick it at the end and we shift all the um, values to the left. So what happens is that you enter on the right side of the cache and then you slowly move up and then you fall off the left side. So that's um, the one thing. Now, uh, this is parameterized cache. So you have number of words is eight. Each word is 16 bits. 8 bits of key, 8 bits of data. But you could also parameterize that uh, if you if you want. So um, that's our data vector, which is basically storing the cache values. And then there's two always blocks here, one for the find logic, the other for the update logic. It's a synchronous cache. So uh, the find logic has match, found, and value. And uh, the way it finds the match is that given a key, it iterates over all the words. And if one of the words um, has a key stored that matches the input key, then it says match found equals one. And the value is decoded from there. And you see the part select again, like I was showing you earlier. And then match found is set to one. If nothing is found, then match found is zero and value is zero. Okay. And the update logic similarly is that, by the way, I, I assign some default values to the cache just so you can see something but you could initialize it with um, key and uh, data vector to be zeros or some random number like 255. You could also put something like that. Um, so uh, when the update happens, basically what I'm doing is I'm shifting the, uh, you know, the words from the beginning to the end left by one um, key value pair and the, the right side and the right side where the key value pair is empty, because I've shifted by one, I stick in this update key and update value, right? So I'm not, remember that I'm not searching for a key value pair and replacing in place. What I'm doing is that I'm just shifting, okay? I'm shifting and sticking it at the end. So what can happen is that if you just keep getting that same value, it could be that all the uh, key value pairs are essentially for that same key. So that's one of the downside of the FIFO mechanism. But it's a very simple mechanism. It's easy to implement. And so that's why I'm showing you this. But because this uh, tutorial is really geared to show you how to use the for loop, the power of the for loop to find the right key, and then part selects that show you how to update things by using the the part selects um, with, with variables inside them. So that's the other part. Now, very simply, the test bench goes around, instantiates this cache and then clock resets are generated. And then we try to update the key with key uh, of one with the value 100. And then we find key nine, which shouldn't be there. And then we find key one. And so I'm gonna show you how to run this. So if I run Icarus Verilog 
and dash g 2012 cache and then dot a dot out um, sorry and dot out so you can see that initialization finishes we update it then and you see the key value of one which is the last uh, 16 bits 0, 01 from 33 it became 64 so we updated the key here and then when we look up 9 it turns out to be that no match is found and then when we look up for key 1 the value is found and it is the new value so there you have it you can see that the cache algorithm is designed now it's available on my uh, bit bucket and I'll leave the link uh, below you can see where this code lives and it's cache.sv if you go there, you can change some of it and see how it works out. Or you can try to synthesize it and see what logic it translates into. The for loop is unfurled across all of the independent key value pairs. So each key value pair gets its own update. And so it should be, um, this logic should run pr pretty fast. It's not a, um, it's not a priority encoder, right? So that's, that's a good part. And it's just a shift register and a pro, and, and a, just a simple compare and update for each um, key value pair. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up or leave me some comments if you uh, want to see some more um, or something was not clear. Um, but uh, if you want to see more videos of this kind, do subscribe to my channel. It helps me uh, see where and what people like to um, see more. So until next video, thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye.